Hey what's up guys, I'm Linux here and welcome back to a brand new tutorial here on the channel. So in today's Unity tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to add particle system based lighting effects into your game. So yeah, it's been a while since my last Unity tutorial, it's been probably about a month ago now. Today it's probably been a month ago since my last Unity tutorial. And the reason as to why it's been a while is because, you know, I've been working on other videos as you can clearly see on my channel. And also I've been working on my games and stuff like that as well, so I've been working on ULEM Shadow Memories, which actually released a new version for the demo uh, yesterday, so there's a new update that's out now for the demo. Demo version 0 0.2 is out now for ULEM Shadow Memories, so if you want to go check that out, it is free on Itch.io, so go check it out. The full game will be coming out soon, so I can't wait to show you guys that when that's ready. And um, uh, I've also been working on Bodhi and Friends version 1.2, so the update for Bodhi and Friends will be coming out soon as well. And uh, I've also been working on another game called Sunny Town, Mem uh, Sunny Town Memories, I was about to say, Sunny Town Murders, um, which if you want to check out the trailer for that, which I released recently, then be sure to go check that out as well. So aside from my game projects, um, how about now we finally get into this tutorial? So as you can see here, I've got a particle system and it's basically emulating, I guess you could say like volumetric lighting right now. Basically it's just got some, uh, you know, just an effect, you know, like a glowy effect on the lighting. And uh, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to add some particle system based lighting effects into your Unity game today. So the reason as to why I'm making this tutorial is because in my recent game, uh, Bodhi and Friends, which I released last year, I'm currently making an update for that, which I mentioned before, uh, version 1.2. And uh, in that update, I'm actually adding these exact same kinds of uh, particle system-based lighting effects. I will show a few examples here on the screen, basically comparing what the game looks like without the lighting effects to what it looks like with the lighting effects. And uh, yeah, so if you guys want to have an effect sort of like sort of like that, then I will be showing you all how to do that today. So uh, yeah. If you do end up enjoying this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and let's get right into it. So, what will this uh, tutorial be useful for exactly? Well, let's say for example you're uh, wanting to add uh, lighting effects into your game, sort of like volumetric lighting, and let's say for example you're not using the universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline, and I'm pretty sure in Unity, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I'm pretty sure in Unity, in order to use volumetric lighting, because I think it is a thing which can be used in Unity, but um, I'm pretty sure you have to be using one of the render pipelines for it, like the universal render pipeline or the high definition render pipeline. Correct me if I'm wrong there. But um, yeah, let's say for example you're just using the standard render pipeline, or maybe you just don't want to use Unity's version of the volumetric lighting and you want to do kind of like your own thing, right? Well, this tutorial will be useful for you, so yeah. Again, if you do enjoy, like, comment, and subscribe, and let's finally get right into it. All that explaining out of the way. So what we're going to be doing is, I'm going to be duplicating this uh, light I have here. So we're just going to uh, press Ctrl D, duplicate that. And uh, with the particle system that I have attached, I am going to get rid of it, because I want to create a completely new one to show you guys from scratch how to do this. So uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go Game Object, and then we're going to go Effects, and then Particle System, and now we have a Particle System. So when you get out your Particle System, it will usually always end up looking like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually rotate our Particle System so then it's pointing down, because they're always pointing up whenever you first get them out. So we're just going to rotate this down to 90 on its x-axis, and there we go. So now it is pointing down. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to make this a child object of our light. And we're going to then zero out its position. So then it's uh, in the same position as the light. And there we go. So now that we have our particle system in place, here's what we're going to do next. So first up, I'm going to set this setting uh, pre-warm to true. And the reason as to why is because, uh, let's say for example we stop the particle system, right? Uh, let's actually turn pre-warm off and watch what happens. So if we play, as you can see the particle system just starts like that from the very beginning and then the particles start coming down. However, if we do pre-warm, 
then it will just play like there's no transition from the start, like the particles are fading in or anything. It just uh, just plays like that, and I think that's a, a good option to set to true for these uh, lighting based, I mean lighting based particle effects, sorry, particle system based lighting effects, because then if you start your game right, um, let's say for example you start your game, and, you know, it's going to be sort of awkward when you just see your particle system uh, lighting effects just then starting as you're starting your game. So it's better to pre-warm them so then when you start your game, they're already just going like that. So yeah. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, setting the simulation speed. And the reason as to why is because with the lighting effects, you don't want them to be too fast. Like you want them to be at maybe 0 0.2 or 0 0.1. Uh, I actually have my other one set at 0 0.2, so if I click on this one, as you can see, the particles move slowly down, and uh, yeah, so if you set it to a speed like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, then you can get it looking good. So uh, yeah, and let's go back to this particle system. So with your max particles, you can leave that at 1000 if you want to. Um, you can turn them down, turn them up, do whatever you want there. Um, what do I have them set to on this one? Yep, I just had a, I just have it set to a thousand max particles on this one. So uh, if you want to use this as reference and use um, a thousand max particles as well, that's totally fine. So uh, yeah. <clears throat> So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our emission. Now with my emission on this particle system, I have it set to 100, so I'm going to do the same here. And what that will do is then it will actually generate a lot more particles happening at once. So uh, yeah. And I recommend that if you have like uh, your max particles set to 1000, don't set the rate anywhere over 100 because otherwise you might have issues and uh, I'll show you guys what I mean. So let's set the emission rate, the rate over time to 500. And uh, as you can see, um, it's sort of having troubles with uh, shooting out particles. Well, oh, now it's alright. It was just having a bit of troubles there. But now it seems to actually be okay. Alrighty. Maybe, um, oh wait, now it's, now, alright, now you guys can sort of see the issue here. So basically what happens is, um, if you set it to, a like a bit of a too high of a rate, what will end up happening is the particles will just end up stopping, uh, stopping, stopping at a certain amount of time, after a certain amount of time, and then they'll continue again after. So make sure that if you have your max particles set to 1000, you set the rate to 100. If you have them set to 5000, then 500 would be the max you can set to for your rate over time, and so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah. So, with me, I'm going to be setting my rate over time to 100. And now we're going to be getting to the shape. So if you click on the shape uh, drop down, as you can see here, um, there will now be a blue outline surrounding the shape of our particle system. So what we're going to be doing is I'm actually going to be scaling the whole entire particle system down to 0 0.3. So you want to go to the top and then go 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and 0 0.3. And the reason as to why we're doing that is because so then we can have the particles look bigger when we do set their uh, their minimum size. So if we go down to, actually before we do shape, we should actually probably go down to, we should actually probably go down to renderer and set a few things here. So if you're min particle size, I recommend setting this to 0 0.1. And there we go. And this is actually uh, where the reason as to why we set the scale to 0 0.3 here goes into. So if we set it to 1, as you can see the particles are a lot more bigger and they're a lot more separated. However, if we scale down the particle system, as you can see when it's at 0 0.3, the particles are a lot more bunched up together, so then we move further away, it actually does look, you know, like they're more just one whole co cohesive thing rather than just a you know a bunch of different little particles in one you know what I mean and you won't notice until you get up close so now with your shape um, you can do whatever you want with this of course but I do have some suggestions which I've done with my particle system over here so if we take a look at the shape over here for example where is it there it is 
as you can see I've got my angle set to 12.9, radius 0 0.71 then I've also changed the scales here to 3 instead of 1 so if we go over to the particle system here and we do them things so let's go set this to 12.91 then the radius 0 0.71 and then we set the scales here to 3 as you can see we now have a uh, sort of similar look to what we had here beforehand so now you might be thinking, so how do you have like see-through color here where you know it's a bit more faded but then on this particle system it's just completely white. How do we change that? Well I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that right now. So if we go to, uh, where is it, color over lifetime, click on this drop down tab, turn it on and then you want to click on this color bar here. And then once you click on the color bar as you can see uh, you'll have these tabs. So on the tap, you'll on the tap. Uh, sorry, on the top, you'll be able to set your uh, your like alpha. And what your alpha is is that's basically like the transparency of the color. So if we turn down the alpha here, and at the end here, as you can see, it's a lot more see through. We can even get it down to the point where we can't even see it anymore. So uh, yeah. So you can change your alpha values. So that's your uh, your transparency, that's how you do that. And then you also have your color as well, which you can change. So if you want to change your white to red, you can do that. You can even click on certain parts of the uh, color bar here. So if I want to click down here, for example, to add a new color into the middle, I can do that. So let's make this yellow. And as you can see, there is now a new color yellow. And then we can do the same thing here. We'll add green and boom, as you can see. We can just keep on adding new colors on if you want to, and uh, yeah, so if you want to do that, you can. But um, we're going to keep it a lot more basic for uh, this tutorial, so I'm just going to delete these colors right now. And uh, we're just going to make this white again. So what I'm going to do is, um, with the top uh, here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning down the uh, alpha on this to something like 5. <coughs> or 4, anything like that is alright. And then with the bottom, we're going to be turning this down to zero. And uh, boom. So now as you can see, it is a lot more see-through. Now there is a bit more to do here instead of just this, but um, I might just adjust this a bit more since it's a bit more uh, visible. Um, there we go, eight looks fine. So now what I'm going to do is in the middle of this here, I'm going to click on the top here. And now I'm going to set the alpha here to zero. And if we move this around a bit, we can actually extend out how long this uh, coloring goes on for. And the reason as to why I'm doing this is so then we can actually shorten the, uh, the actual like lighting effect itself and basically like how long the particle system is. And so then it fades out at an earlier point rather than touching the ground and then having this awkward cutout look here. So uh, yeah. Because as you can see, the uh, particle system does look a bit awkward w when it cuts out towards the ground, and it sort of adds a bit of you know unpolishedness, or you know it's not that's not a real word, but you know it just makes the uh, effect look unpolished, is what I mean, right? But if we uh, you know shorten the fade in, and we make it fade out quicker, as you can see, it actually does look a lot better. So you might want to adjust that depending on how long your particle system is or you know how long you want your effect to be. If you want your effect to be real short you can also do that where you just have it like that you know what I mean so then the uh, lighting effect is just shorter and it's not too long but yeah you guys can do whatever you want adjust this however you want and uh, yeah. So that there guys is basically how you do the particle system based lighting effects in Unity. So uh, yeah, as you can see, this is the final result that I've got right here. And by the time you finish up this tutorial, hopefully you have a very similar result. So again, there are other methods of doing this in Unity. For example, I'm pretty sure that Unity's uh, render pipeline, such as the Universal Render Pipeline and High Definition Render Pipeline, I think they have volumetric lighting, correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, I've never used them render pipelines before, so I wouldn't know. But yeah, um, if you're looking to do, uh, you know, lighting effects uh, like this in Unity and you want to use particle systems for it, so then you have more customization over it and stuff like that, then uh, yeah, this is how you do it.
and I hope you all did enjoy this tutorial, I hope you all did find some use out of it, and uh, yeah, this is the exact lighting effect which I'm going to be uh, including in version 1.2 of Bodian Friends, and I will say that that has made the game look a lot better. There is still a bit of adjustments to do with it, I think, but overall it does look really good, and I really do like the new lighting effects that I have. So uh, yeah, if you want to add some more effects to this game, to your game, then uh, this is probably a good choice for you. And anyways, I'll see you all soon in my next one. Bye-bye.